Good evening, wrestling fans. We're your host, Lewis. And Jaden. And this is Evolution, Evolution of, of Pro wrestling. wrestling. Welcome back, fans, to another episode of Evolution of Pro Wrestling. We're going to have an excellent topic on hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. The best errors in wrestling. We're going to be going talking about all wrestlers and all errors in WWE, WCW, even ECW. And some that are actually coming to this day as we speak. Now, when we talk about wrestling errors... You talk about the past, present, and future of wrestling errors, Jaden. Yeah. See, me personally, I usually like to discuss the era of the 80s era, you know? And when you talk about the 80s era, it's kind of something not easy to describe because there was many moments in that era that... It's very difficult to... Now, are you talking about a specific era? That okay, right alright. Let's talk about, for, for instance, I'm an old school type of guy. I like the Golden Age era with Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, and the Ultimate Warrior, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Which, to me, was the best eras out there. You know? So, in your opinion, which era, because there's numerous eras, there's the New Generation era, there's the PG era... There's the reality era, which we're going to get into. Since you've been watching wrestling, which era caught your attention the most? I absolutely love the Attitude Era. The Attitude Era it brings back some old wrestlers and some wrestlers that you see now. Like okay. Stone Cold, Shane McMahon, Hulk Hogan. If I'm not mistaken, Hulk Hogan, The Rock. You know, wrestlers like that. Those were... Basically, the top wrestlers that made the Attitude Era the way it is now because the stuff they did that impacted wrestling, like making all of, all of these crazy matches, making history like The Rock versus Stone Cold. Okay, so when you talk about the Attitude Era, what caught, what do you think caught the attention of the fans the most in that Attitude Era? Um, I think all the hardcoreness, like all people going through the tables, getting hit with the candlesticks, the chairs, like that type of stuff. Well, I would have to say, I think the thing, the 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 one that caught the most in the attitude ever was actually DX. That, you know, that, DX that's actually true. was like, no rules. We're gonna do what we want. That's how it's gonna be. That's how the new generation is gonna be in the in the attitude ever. I mean, I think D, those are DX the DX pretty DX pretty attitude. much went against all odds and. Went up against the authority figure. They they did suck it and yeah. uh, chief shot at Sergeant Slaughter in the past and Vince McMahon and did a whole bunch of stuff. So that's pretty much the, what was what the defining era of the Attitude Era, which brought out these wealthy characters, these good characters, not wealthy. I'm sorry, these good characters in The Rock, Stone Cold, Edge, the Hardy Boys. But I think that these eras would have never existed if the Golden Age eras would have would have been around, or you know, the new generation. Because in the new era, in the new generation era, you had Hulk Hogan still in nineteen ninety three when he was in uh, WCW, still in WWE in nineteen ninety three. But in nineteen ninety four, he went to WCW. You had Doink the Clown, you had Crush, Yokozuna, um, a lot of these guys that that still they named Shawn Michaels when he had just became the Heartbreak Kid. You know, a lot of these gimmicks back then in the new generation were coming out, and it was like a battle between WCW and WWE because they were going head to head. They had gimmicks in that era in WCW of Sting and Lex Luger and Ron Simmons. You know what I mean? So a lot of people were questioning, okay, who's going to take over professional wrestling in that type of era? WCW or WWE? And back then, when it was WWF. Now, going back to questions. A lot of people are questioning where did the PG where did the PG era come from? The PG era, I don't really like it. No, PG, I gotta agree with you with that. The PG, the PG era, era is, is like, like they don't have no hardcore, they don't it's not I can honestly say wrestling is not like how it used to no, be. No, of course not. And that and that's the whole point. When it comes to when when it comes to uh stuff like that it's crazy with that type of era of the PG era because you you see an era like that and fans are not really too on because you know now you're worried about sponsors you're worried about um, ownerships and all these people you know money yeah you know a lot of people like in this era a lot of people called 
WWE caught backlash with this new Bray Wyatt gimmick in this new era because Ooh. supposedly it's not good for kids. It's too demonic for kids. You know, live a little bit. This is why this is why the ratings are dropping in WWE because you're not getting the fans to watch. You got these. I, I'm sorry, these writers that you have in WWE right now, Vince McMahon, they're terrible. This era is terrible. My favorite ever back then also was the ruthless aggression when John Cena was born. You know, you had. Uh, Al Yankovic at a show, you know what I mean? It's it's like certain stuff, you know, that that people don't see these days. In in the Ruthless Aggression, John Cena came out. He came out with the Doctor of Thugonomics. Oh, yeah. He came out with this new attitude that, that, you know, I'm untouchable. Kurt Angle, another one, he just came on there. You know, it's stuff like that. When you see it, that type of era, it makes you think, wow, you had the women in broad panties. You had Brock Lesnar and... Vince McMahon going at it. You had uh, Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle. In that era of ruth ruthless aggression, there was more battle Things into were a lot it. Interesting, but I think it wasn't as better. It wasn't better than the Attitude Era. So it's kind of up there with the Attitude Era and the ruthless aggression era. But me personally, my favorite is the Hulkamania era. When Hulkamania was out there, you know, he came, he pretty much took over professional wrestling until maybe the early 90s. Because, you know, WWE was in transition, the wrestling business was in transition at that time in the era that nobody wanted to see the breaking of the shirt anymore. Nobody wanted to see the waving of the, you know, the hand and the, and the say your prayers, take your vitamins. No, everybody wanted to start, start seeing something different. So, when it came down to it, that's when they turned him heel. Yeah. And they brought that new era of the NWO. Hollywood Hogan. Hollywood Hogan, exactly. And that's what happened. When Hollywood Hogan became Hollywood Hogan, that changed the business forever. Yeah. That's what created the Monday Night War era. Because the Monday Night Wars were phenomenal that <laughs> WCW pretty much kicked WWE's ass for... 89 straight weeks. That's two years. <laughs> yeah. Two years that they were winning the rating wars until 1998 when WWE finally took over. Why? Because WWE finally decided let's get out of the new generation era and let's get into the Attitude Era. Now, Dad, we cannot forget about the ECW era. Oh, no. We cannot. Not. We could no, go but... back to Tommy Dreamer, Sandman, Sabu. That era was... Iconic. No, it absolutely. No, absolutely. There was tables, ladders, chairs. But see, but that's was, that's what's missing now. ECW. Is ECW is what that that's what's missing now, and that's what a lot of people fail to understand that you see WWE. Excuse me, see WWE, you see WCW back then. What people fail to understand, there's a lot of indie promotions trying to bring this hardcore style back. Yeah. For instance. Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling. Oh, yeah, I love that. This I indie that. promotion is hardcore. It's the new style of hardcore, the new era of hardcore. Why? Because they want to show fans that hardcore is still out there. And that's what WWE failed to understand, that once they took that attitude era, they took that roof of this aggression era, made it PG, they lost a lot of fans for that. I also think USA Pro Wrestling has a little bit of hardcore in it, like... Like example, Cornell, Wor w Cornell Walker versus Vor I'm, I'm sorry. Vordell. Sorry. Vordell Walker. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Vordell Walker and Danny Moff. Vordell Walker match, versus Danny Moff. Say. Those guys were going at it. Absolutely. So I think that was and, No, and, but that's the point. That when you when you bring that to the fans, the fan, it, it's what the fans want. Yeah. It's not, you know, I understand business is business. That That's great. But you have to see back then what makes your product out to the fans, what the fans like in the product. You had back then, you had the tables, ladders, and chairs match. I don't, ha I haven't seen a match like that in years it's since true. WrestleMania 17. You see these chairs, they no longer could get hit in the head with the chairs because supposedly they don't want to see the bleeding. Kids are watching. You know what I mean? And I understand that. You know, kids like the show. They like John Cena. They like Roman Reigns. They like all these people. But you have to realize that. You're losing, your ratings are dropping every single Monday night. That you're losing 2 million fans every week. 
something's got to give. Something's got to give when you when your writers are not doing what they're supposed to do when it comes to writing the script. You know, pretty much what I'm trying to say is allow these men to bring their character out. You know, forget the storyline. Like let them. That's why that's why the attitude ever was such a success because Stone Cold brought out Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, and The Rock. The most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Why? Because he went from Dwayne Johnson to The Rock. Got a lot of heat from it. You know, die, Rocky, die. And then finally, he came out, I'm the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. I'm pretty sure the Attitude Era had a big piece of course. On WWE. Because that's course. what made WWE so amazing. It was like... They had a lot. They had a lot of things. They used to have the bleeding. They used to have the ladders breaking, getting hit in the head with ladders, going through like four tables. Like now, they don't do any of that stuff. No, anymore. but that, that's what I'm saying. That's what that, that's pretty much what what they want to see now. You know, many fans want to see that type of match. They want to see a hardcore match. They want to see pinfalls count anywhere match. More steel cage. Head on a cell. Speaking you know, of that, that's I haven't what, seen one of those in a long that's time. That's what I'm saying, dude. The last head on a cell match I saw, I think, was probably in WrestleMania. Not even with, that. Or Elimination Chamber with Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens. I haven't even seen a steel cage match since Roman Reigns went against Brock Lesnar. That's what I'm saying. That it's like, that was at the, uh, I believe, the Greatest Story Rumble, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in the Saudi Arabia show. I, 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 think, I think it was so. that show. Yeah. And it's... It's not, you, the product is not catching people's attention, you know, and when you mentioned the ECW era, I remember that era when they formed an alliance with WCW, when they invaded WWE, and it was just a major invasion, it was WCW, WWE, uh, WCW, ECW against WWE, major invasion, they took over the company, Shane McMahon and Stephanie McMahon, in that era, took over, and that's what made it even more popular that you pretty much wanted to see what was going on, you know? So when it came to that, it's like, what are you going to do next? You understand what I'm saying? So you also have the NWO era in 2001 and 2002. Didn't really make a splash like it did in the 1990s, because in the 1990s in WCW the NWO was unstoppable. Yeah. You know, bar none. They, you did mention they are the greater faction. They were a good faction, but even though we argued before about who was better than the NWO, which we still debate about that, but NWO was an excellent faction in WCW. Definitely. It did bring ratings to that era, Bad the Monday Night War era, and that's what made that battle go on between them. Now you talk. There's another one that. Really caught the attention, which I wish he could come back. The reality era. CM Punk, oh, yeah. by far, was the best on the mic and in the ring. The man can drop pipe bombs Oof, yeah. in the mic all the time. He had a lot of people up. He had a lot of wrestlers upset. He, CM Punk, I could say, was a fearless wrestler. CM Punk said he doesn't care how big, how small, whatever you are. He said... You good? You get on his throne and you try to disrespect him, and he's gonna say something right back at you. Exactly, and that's what that's the whole point. That when you when you're doing promos, see that's that's the thing about this, Jaden, about this era now. You don't see too many promos out there anymore. You know, back then in the new generation, in the new uh, in the new era. The, I'm sorry, not the new era. The new generation and the golden age. That's what you saw. Okay. You saw more promos, more guys. Speaking in interviews and doing these awesome things, you know what I mean? So, I miss those things. I miss guys doing these awesome promos. I used to watch Saturday Night's Main Event in the Golden, the Golden Age era. This, this show, Saturday Night's Main Event, was by far the best show on WWE. Every Saturday night, I would always tune in, tune in to Saturday Night's Main Event. That was the era back then in the 80s that everybody enjoyed. They do awesome promos. They go ahead and and, and talk about. Uh, there was one that I saw Hulk Hogan in a steel cage doing a promo. You know, nowhere to run, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Just like I like Mr. Wonderful, the cage. Let it be the judge. You know, that was a good promo because it caught the attention 
of the fans. Now you don't see that anymore. You know, now the new era. Okay, you have AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, um, Ricochet, a lot of guys out there. This new era, I could say, okay, it's pretty good. You know, excellent talent, great wrestlers. But if you had to compare an era to er well, just numerous eras, who would it be? Well, before we get to that, just like you said, all of these wrestlers are amazing. But I think what's throwing that off is the PG part. That's what I feel like was throwing it off, but... Like you said, if I had to choose two eras to compare, I would compare the ECW era to the Attitude Era. Okay, well, That's... okay, so if, if with those two eras, okay, you're comparing those two eras. So, if you had a chance to f change something in that era, say, okay, Jaden, you're a promoter, you're, you're in that era of, you know, promoting a show in the, the ECW era or the Attitude Era, what would you change in those eras? Um... In ECW, I would definitely, hmm. well, I wouldn't say I would really change anything, but I would like to see a lot of things return, like, back to that, if they ever, if the Attitude Era would ever come back, or ECW, I would like to see a lot of things return, like, in the Attitude Era, I would like to see tables being lit on fire, I would like to see, like, casket matches, like, more matches in these eras, same thing goes for... ECW, so I wouldn't really change nothing, but I would like to see some returns. Okay, so in in that particular situation, see, nowadays it's hard to have matches like that because, like you said, it's a lot of PG stuff and not too many people want to see it. Okay, for an example, you have, um, back then, there was an era called the WCW 80s era. In the 80s era, there was matches such as War Games, The Match Beyond, two giant cages together. There was Battle Bowl, the Lethal Lottery, that there was a battle royal of pretty much a winner to ring, win a brass ring, ring, pretty much a ring. But it was, it was unique because in that era, they would pair up random tag teams, and whoever would win would go into the battle royal. And I mean, you could have had people that were enemies, like, to this day, they still talk about it, that, say for an example, there, there's a battle bowl now, you can have enemies such as Roman Reigns and, and Drew McIntyre teaming up against uh, Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar, you understand what I'm saying? That's what a lot of people fail to understand, and that's the era that we want to bring back, that's the era we want to see, you know, but now, the era that we're seeing, you know, we've seen guys coming up like Ricochet and... AJ Styles and Alistair Black. This era, this new age era is pretty unique. You know, it's pretty good out there. And now, what we don't see anymore, there used to be a lot of celebrities oh, in the yeah. era. Especially WrestleMania back then in the 80s era. That you had Mr. T, you had uh, Al Yankovic at one point, you had... Um, Danny DeVito, Cindy Lauper, you know, you had a lot of these guys that were actually in this era. Now, Dad, I have a question for you. If you had to compare two eras, which ones would they be and why? Uh, wow, that's a good question, Jaden, to compare an era. Well, I would have to say the era I would compare myself to would be the... Attitude Era and the Reality Era. Because if they were to able to combine the new, the Attitude Era and the Reality Era... Now imagine CM Punk in the Attitude Era. With Ooh. his promos that he cuts Ooh. and the stuff that he does. That would be absolutely Imagine amazing. him cutting, pop, cutting promos and doing pipe bombs in the Attitude Era with the likes of Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Stone Cold, The Rock. You know what I mean? That would have been awesome. And... That's what people fail to understand. When you got guys like that on the mic, you can't let that go. Fans are requesting that. Fans want that. And that's what you need to do. When the fans are asking, that's what you need to do. And also, let's not forget, Pete Rose. He got tombstoned by, by uh, Kane at one time at WrestleMania at that era. In the Attitude Era. He got, he got tombstoned by 
Not once, not twice, but three times. And every year he oh, went. Goodness. And that's what fans like. That's what they like to do. And then you also had uh, the likes of, uh, in the 2000 eras, in the 2000 era, this was the ruthless aggression. Drew Carey. Drew, Car Drew Car Carey, he's an actor. He, he actually came in the Royal Rumble. I don't know how the hell he oh, came in the Royal Rumble. Goodness. But he did it. And he came in for like maybe a few minutes, a second. He saw Kane and then just jumped out by himself. <laughs> he jumped out of the ring and just let it go. Like, okay, I'm going to do this and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, to me, I, my, I, I like the Attitude Era, but forever and ever, the Hulkamania era and the 80s era to me is always going to be the best. You know, the matches that they had, the, it was crazy. And... It's like, ah. Oh. Look, we miss, we miss these eras. We want them, want them to come back. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it would be, it would be awesome. And when it comes to that era, I want to see, I wanted to see the old Stone Cold and the Rock type attitude again. In but that, that's something you won't, you will never replica. You won't have a replica that's... about a rivalry like that. You know, stars like The Rock and Austin, it's, I think, I like the 80s era, but I think Austin and The Rock were a better rivalry in that era of the Attitude Era than it was back then with Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant or Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. I feel like you know? there is absolutely no one who can compare this up to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold is basically, besides The Rock and a few other wrestlers, is basically the one who made the Attitude Era such a great rest, such a great era, excuse me. He used to go for the McMahons, he used to destroy cars, he used to throw belts in the water. Of course. He used to do stuff, Listen. he used to break the rules. He brought a, a beer truck into Inside the, the, the arena. arena. And exactly, he, and oh, that's yeah. what a lot of people like. And, and the thing is, you took, they took Stone Cold from a man that was in the Hollywood Blondes and WCW in that era of the 80s and 90s, brought him to WWE, let him Come out of that show and become the rattlesnake. Yeah. You know, but you also had the 80s of the NWA, which was at its peak of wrestling like a lot of ways because they kind of pretty much paved the way with other superstars such as Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Barry Windham, the Four Horsemen. You know, a lot of people don't understand that NWA was a major product back then when it came to before even WWE. You know, yeah, they had the uh, the ninth one of the world under Andre the Giant back then in WWF. It was three W's? Yeah, before they, they made it short, and then right after that they put it WWF, and then WWE, which I don't know why, but that, you know, so a bunch of controversy, you know. And there's one comment that... Uh, Moises Marquez just mentioned, which is true. CM Punk was a modern day Steve Austin. He was rebellious. He was against the authority in that reality era. He dropped pipe bombs on Steve on uh, Vince McMahon. He dropped pipe bombs on Triple H. All the authority. That's what he did, and that's what fans wanted to see. And when this man came back after he won that title against John Cena, Money in the Bank, the fans went crazy. The fans went crazy. He was an excellent. He was excellent in the ring, and he was a. And as again, another comment. He was a thorn in the authority side, for sure. You know what I mean. But when you see him, imagine putting him in the era of Dusty Rhodes or Sting oh, or yeah, Lex nice. Luger or the Steiner Brothers. This is the '80s era in WCW. See, this is what I'm saying. They, they, when you try to compare different type of eras, it's kind of hard because you had certain eras that did certain things that now superstars won't do. You know that you would crack open a chair, you would crack a, a man's skull with a chair, or you would body slam a, a woman that you can't even do now because all you hear is, "Oh, you can't hit a woman anymore." You know it's not part of wrestling. Wrestling for men. No, no. Listen, we in a new era. You saw for itself Nia Jax came in the Royal Rumble. She she turned that new era into this is this is a man's game. You know what I mean? And you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 
it's like, for an example, in this era, compared to back then, nobody would have ever, ever think of putting the women in a WrestleMania main event. Why? Because supposedly they said women couldn't main event WrestleMania. This was a man's competition. We're not going to do it. Now, in this new age era, they finally voiced their opinion and say, I, we want the women in that main event. And that's what's going to happen. And look what happened. It drew money. It drew attention. Believe it or not, this era of women too. That's another era. Women's era. They're taking over professional wrestling, yeah, whether people like it or not. You know, that's the era now that's happening that many people are... A lot of people are enjoying that. Of course a lot of people are enjoying it, but there's also a lot of backlash. There's a lot of backlash for people that see that they're... That supposedly the women are not as good as the men, which I have to disagree because... I, yeah, I disagree. I'm the sorry. Women, for the, the listen, women stole the show. Listen, for the past couple of months and the past couple of times, the women have stole the show in this era. And that's why I say it's a woman's era. Yeah. There's also a woman's era. There was a woman's era back then with Fabulous Moolah and uh, Mae Young, Lilani Kai, uh, Trish Stratus, Tori Wilson, Lita. All these women paved the way for the, the women now. And that's what makes that era, this women era now, unique. Controversial to some people, yeah. but still. That's what, that's what brings out the fans, this controversy. You know, and that's what needs to be done. Yeah. You bring more controversy out there, you're going to have the fans looking. You're going to have the fans watching the TV. You're going to have them staying there watching what needs to be done. Yeah. You want to put certain stuff out there? Okay. I have to admit, in this new age era now, the Firefly house of Bray Wyatt has caught some attention. You know, I'm, I'm not knocking it yet, Jaden. I'm not knocking it because, you know, it's just starting. It could be something. It could grow something to be something big. You never know. You know, Great White is an excellent character. Excellent ring talent. You never know how it's going to go. I mean, go. but we all know Great White is like the the demonic no, character. No, but that's what I'm saying. But Why that, are they no, doing but, that to But him? that's what I'm saying. That could be the sign of that demonic character. You know. By making him like a super jolly happy man? Well, you see, he has demonic stuff. He talks about sociopath and all that stuff. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, to put another comment out there from Moses Marquez... There are a lot of women with incredible talent, some better than most guys, which is absolutely right. Yeah. It's, he's right. And I've seen it because <laughs> Nia Jax pretty much took half of, half of the people out in the Royal Rumble until she got RKO'd RKO, and all that stuff. Yeah. So, but what are you going to do? It's a, it's, in that time, it's a men Royal Rumble. It's not the women's Royal Rumble. The men, they're like, no, we're going to take over. you got to get out of here. I mean, but she had the guts to go in the men's ring, and she uh, eliminated exactly, a few men. Exactly, you know. And there is one more era I want to I wanna point out there, the early years. This was like a mixture of 1984 to 1995. You know what I mean? That's when you had the Yokozuna. And you had uh, Yokozuna and you had Shawn Michaels and Crush and Hulk Hogan, Brutus Beefcake. Everything was combined at one time. And, and you see, even Moses Marquez said, you know, the young man shakes your head. You know, you shake your head, you know, but you got to understand the character he might be more into. You know, Bray Wyatt. He's mentioning Bray Wyatt. You know, you, you see Bray Wyatt, you never know what that character is going to come out of. It could come out of something enormous, you know, something that's going to catch the attention of the fans. Hey, only time will tell. No, that's what I'm saying. That that hopefully it will come out good. I pray it comes out. It's we're it waiting good. for it. We hope it's good, and we hope it gets. I there. mean, we can look on the good side. If it doesn't go good, I mean, he still carries around his little demonic things, like his little dolls, his little scary things. No, of things. course, but they 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 gotta build. The, come on, this man. The they, man. They just gotta do a little. Better. The man has impeccable talent. The man has yeah. excellent talent. He's excellent in the ring. He's he's awesome. Now with this era that happened, let's see how it's going to go. But wrestling fans, that's all for tonight. We appreciate all of you watching. Thank you all for tuning in. Next week, we are not going to be live. We're actually going to be in Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling, May 10th. It's just uh, Mayles and Mayhem. We're going to be there live Uh it will be his birthday, uh, watching the show VIP. Yeah. But um, tune in tomorrow. 
we are going to be in uh, Melbourne, Florida. We're going to be interviewing, actually, uh, pretty much a lot of talent of the Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling Company for next week's show with Alex Red, the uh, fearless leader and evil genius of the promotion, as well as other talent. Also, uh, Thursday, we're actually being invited to Weekends of Wrestling in New York City. We're going on his show. Uh, he's going to interview us. We're going to have an excellent discussion. And in the next two weeks, we will be naming our next topic. And please be sure to plug in to Smart Mark Radio with Moses Marquez. He does our Google Play and our SoundCloud. Excellent uh, sounds and excellent talent from this man's podcast. And he does excellent work. So feel free to check that out. And we'll see you in two weeks, fans. And I'll be announcing... Uh, that show, that next topic that we're going to have, and it's going to be an interesting show. Yeah. From myself, Lewis, and my co-host, Jaden, thank everybody for watching. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.